Hello everyone, this is Ernie Hartman, Technical Services Manager at Amp Global. Today we're going to go over the Control Pro web app, how to look up your vehicle, set the module up, and then the wiring page. So let's get started. So first you can start off by going to the PAC website, and then up here at the top, this tab is Steering Wheel Controls. So underneath that you have a few options. You have the CP2, CP5, which is the Control Pro. You have the SWI RC1 the original SWI RC and then an SWI calculator. So in this video we'll go over the Control Pro stuff. Keep in mind that the RC1 is very similar to the Control Pro so you would just apply you know what you're going to learn in this video to that. The RC and the calculator uh, we'll cover that in a different video at a different time. So let's go ahead and uh, click on CP2, CP5. So that then brings us here to the landing page for the Control Pro wiring guide. So here you're presented with two options, the CP2 and the CP5. So for this video, we'll go over the CP2 because it is very close to the RC1 and it is definitely the more widely used module. So we'll go ahead and pick CP2. So now on this screen, you're presented with your programming method the dip switches, which applies to the CP2, the RC1, or the CP5. Over here you have connect and configure. This would only apply to the CP5. So let's go ahead and click dips. So now this is where you look up your vehicle and your radio. So for this video, uh, let's just pick a random. We'll do a 2011 Mazda 3. So we pick Mazda, Mazda 3, 2011. Now down here you have an option. So this one has no option. Uh, sometimes like with Toyota, it'll say amplified or non-amplified. Or if it's Nissan, it'll say Bluetooth or no option. Uh, these options usually dictate, you know, what wiring is going to be there, what wires you need to connect, how the plugs look. So it's a number of random things. So always make sure you pick the, uh, the option there if they have some. Also, you notice up here it says enter pack radio replacement product. So now let's say you're using a CP2 or an RC1 with one of these modules. You would select the module rather than a vehicle because all of these modules have little pigtails on them to connect your steering wheel control module. But again, in this video, we're going to do a 2011 Mazda 3. So then we come over here and pick radio. We'll pick a Pioneer because that's pretty popular. Also, you'll notice this right here, don't see your vehicle. So let's say you came here to look up your vehicle and the vehicle you have isn't there. You would click this and it would take you down another path to, to tell you how to manually wire the vehicle up and manually program it for things that don't have a config. So what is a config? We'll get to that in a minute. So now we've selected our vehicle. We hit next. So this is your dip switch page. So this is how you would set the dip switches. We see here one through six is down, seven and eight is up. This is the vehicle. So this is what tells the module what vehicle it's in. Over here we have the radio dip switches. So for Pioneer it's one, two, three down, four up. This is what tells the module what radio you're connecting to it. Now earlier when I said vehicles that have a config, this is a config. So this is a configuration that is pre-programmed into the module so we know what buttons are there, what the values of those buttons are, and then how to report that to the radio. So you can see here we've picked Mazda, Mazda 3, 2011, no option with a Pioneer radio. Also notice that on is down, not up. So if you're looking at the module and it's flipped upside down and this says no, <laughs> that means you got it the wrong way. You need to flip it over with the vehicle dip switches on the left and the radio dip switches on the right. So now that we've set our dip switches, we'll hit next. So on this list, what you see, this is the default button functions. So these are the buttons that are in the vehicle, and these are what they are pre-programmed to within the config. Now, you can change them if you want, and there's a document here. So this is the list of functions we have programmed your buttons to by default. If you are happy with these functions, then no further action is needed. If you wish to reassign the steering wheel control functions or utilize short press, long press, dual command functionality, 
you will need to follow the button reassignment steps outlined in this. So what is this wordy phrase here? Short press, long press pretty much means you can assign two commands to one button. So short press would be, say, if you wanted to do short press on volume down to be volume down and then long press to be mute. If you only had a couple buttons, you could do that. So if you want to see that document, you just click there. And then this comes up with the process for that. So now getting back to our page. So now that we know what the default button functions are, we'll hit next. And now here we have the wiring page. And as you can see, there's quite a bit going on on this page here. So let's see if we can go through that a little bit. So again, up here, you see make model year option radio your product. So it just reminds you what you selected installation note. So this is very important. A lot of people miss this note. Uh, this can tell you things like, you know, where the connector can be found. Uh, you know, if you need to ground a certain wire or make another connection that can't be illustrated here. So C2 can be found in the factory Bluetooth module, which is located above the glove box. The factory Bluetooth module will need to be disconnected. If the vehicle is not equipped with factory Bluetooth, then the white and black wire will be left disconnected. So that's basically saying if you don't have Bluetooth, you don't have to connect this. We got a little thing here, connector help. What is that? So we'll click that. And here we have pictures. So if we have pictures of these connectors and where they're located, we upload them here to you know, give you a little bit of a reference point of what to look for. So it's always good to click that. And now what we have here, this is a pinout of the connector. We've highlighted which pins to connect to. And then we give you here, what you're looking at is the Control Pro wire color. So on the CP2, there's two black wires. Now they both go to ground. So it doesn't matter which one you hook to which. But the first black wire goes to ground for the power of the module. The second black wire is what you use to ground the steering wheel control circuit. And that's very important because, you know, voltage is sent out on these wires into the buttons and it comes back on this. So if your steering wheel control circuit does not have ground, then it's not going to work because it's not a complete circuit. So then we go on to the constant power, accessory power, the, the white wires, those are your legs. We call them legs of the steering wheel control circuit. So this vehicle has two legs. And if you only hook up one leg, then half of your buttons are not going to work. In this case, the white and black wire is your Bluetooth buttons. Now over here, we have the vehicle wire colors and the pin numbers. Now, oftentimes we get people that are confused. They say, oh, well, you know, there's no purple wire in pin nine or, you know, there's no uh, red wire in pin 10. It's actually green or, you know, whatever. So just remember that the wire color is not as important as the pin number. So if you look your vehicle up and you see these colors and they don't match the pin number in your car. So first of all, check your picture here to make sure that you're looking at the pin properly because it says connector viewed from wire side. So if you're looking at the connector properly and you are sure you have pin 10, then again, pin location is way more important than wire color because unfortunately manufacturers aren't very consistent with their wire coloring. I don't know why they're all different. Some are better than others. So just remember pin position is way more important than wire color. So then down here, we show you to hook the 3.5 jack to your Pioneer radio. And, um, you know, that's it. That's the process. So just a few little side notes here up at the top. We have what we call a breadcrumb trail. So you can always go back if you're on the wiring. You say, oh, I forgot to flip the dip switches. You can click back to dips here and it'll tell you. And then you can go back to your wiring page. And then, oh, I'm done. I want to see, you know, what functions are there. You click buttons. That goes here. Go back to wiring. So then down here at the bottom, we have a print button. You can click this to print out a PDF of your wiring. So you can take it to the vehicle if you're using a computer and can't move it around. Or if you need help, you can click this. And we give you a tab to send an email to tech support. Or we have some troubleshooting guides here that can help you with your install. And then you can see if you click configure, you come back here. And now we're back at the beginning again. We can hit next, next, next. And that gets us back to the wiring page. So 
that's it. That's the uh, Control Pro wiring guide, and like I said, it's very much like the SWIRC one. So, you know, they they look up and operate the same. And um, that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.